Congress is debating cap-and-trade legislation. But what is cap-and-trade? A bureaucracy in the federal government will establish the maximum amount of CO2 that every company will be allowed to emit into the atmosphere. This is the cap. The government then sells carbon permits or allowances to each company, up to the limit established by the cap. Companies buy the permits they need to cover their CO2 emissions. If the company emits less CO2, it can sell its excess permits to another company, who needs extra permits. Or, if the company emits more CO2 than its cap allows, it will have to buy extra permits from another company. In this hypothetical example, a utility that emits 1 million tons of CO2 can buy enough permits from the government for $35 million to cover its capped emissions. The $35 per ton price is an estimate that is consistent with those used by McKinsey and Company. In practice, it could be higher or lower. If during the year the utility can install equipment that cuts its emissions by 100,000 tons, it can sell the unused permits. If, on the other hand, it emits 100,000 tons more than its cap, it will have to buy the extra permits from a company having excess permits. Next year, the government will lower the amount of CO2 the company can emit. Here, the allowed emissions are cut to 900,000 tons. The company pays the government $31.5 million for these carbon permits. But since the company still emits 1 million tons of CO2, it will have to buy the additional 100,000 permits through an exchange for $3.5 million. This raises two issues. First, are there any technologies available that will allow a company to cut its CO2 emissions as required by the government? Second, where does the money come from to buy the permits? There are no technologies available today to allow companies to significantly cut their emissions from existing installations. There are a few experimental technologies, but they have not yet been proven to work and won't be available until at least 2020, if ever. Some small reductions can be made at existing installations, but not the 80% required by the cap-and-trade legislation. Our video on CO2 capture and sequestration explains this in greater detail. And where does the money come from to buy the permits? It must come from cash on hand, or from borrowings, or from increased prices to consumers. Here is an example using actual data from American Electric Power's annual report. In 2008, AEP had revenues of $14.4 billion and emitted 175 million tons of CO2. AEP will have to pay the government over $6 billion to buy the necessary permits. It lacks the cash to buy the permits, and doubling its debt every two years is unsustainable. It must raise prices by over 40% to obtain the money to buy the permits. AEP is not an isolated example. Here is the same information for the Southern Company, another major electric utility. Southern Company will also have to raise prices by over 40% to obtain the money to buy permits. Here's what cap and trade means to these companies and to their customers. There will be higher prices. Increasing the debt is unsustainable. There will be little money available for new investments. And there is no way for them to cut their emissions by the required 80%. Nearly every other industry will be impacted in the same way, or they will move offshore. But what about free permits, something the Europeans have already tried? Congress is proposing to give some free permits to certain industries. The leaders in Congress are doing this to give representatives from coal and steel producing states, among others, to vote for cap-and-trade legislation. This is an attempt to
to buy the votes needed to pass cap-and-trade legislation. Free permits merely delay the inevitable. The cost of buying permits will still be huge and affect every industry that doesn't get free credits. In Europe, the companies that got free credits sold them for profits. And Europe's emissions have increased with cap-and-trade. Free permits are a bait-and-switch gambit to get the votes in Congress to pass cap-and-trade legislation. It won't take long to eliminate free permits and require companies to pay for all the carbon permits. Europe is now trying to eliminate free permits. Free permits didn't work, so Europe is now going to require companies over the next few years to buy all the permits. More information about cap and trade can be found at www.carbonfolly.com. We hope you have found this information on cap and trade useful. Our other videos on energy issues, such as natural gas or wind, can be found at YouTube by entering Energy Clarity. This presentation has been produced by T.S. August. Additional information is available at www.tsaugust.org. Thank you for listening.